there are two conditions you're going to find the TVs in. One, TVs that are connected to the internet. Two, TVs that are not connected to the internet. First, we're going to address the ones that are connected to the internet and what you're going to find. <clears throat> Many times when a customer gets an on-screen notification says there's new software, do you want to download it? Because of the persona that software updates have received over the years, a lot of consumers are going to select no. Therefore, when we release software updates to correct issues, correct problems, correct settings that we find with our product over time as environmental changes occur, HDMI versions, etc., then the customers may select no because of the persona that they have about software updates. This can create an issue that is covered in bulletins or fixed by software updates. So what we're going to do is we're going to start off by going through the customer's menu, what you're going to find, how you can correct it. We're also going to show you how you find the software and download it onto a USB drive and load it into the television. So with the customer's TV in the customer's menu, what I'm going to press is I'm going to press the settings key, which is a gear-shaped key. Then I'm going to go into all settings. If I go down here to the general setting in the customer's menu, I'm going to scroll down with the thumb wheel or with the arrow key to an item in this general menu that says about this TV. When you come into this menu, it's going to tell you how things are set up. It'll tell you what version software is presently in the television, and it will tell you whether automatic software updates are allowed or not. With this setting in the off position, it'll ask the customer, do you want to download the new software, yes or no? If this is turned on, then the only notification that they will receive is going to be a notification. New software has downloaded to your TV that will take effect the next time you turn the TV off and then back on. We have designed our product to be innovative to the customer's use of the product when there are software updates. Now if you turn this on, that's what they're going to start to see. Now if you just now turn this on, this may be an old version. You can do a live check for software updates and it will check to see if there are any software updates available. It'll tell you it'll take a few seconds for it to look at the server and check to see if there's any version updates. With the customer's permission, I would leave this automatic software updates on, on a television that is connected to the internet. And please let them know that it, it's not evasive and will shut their TV down whenever there's a software update. It'll just let them know that it's been updated and it'll take effect next time they turn it off and back on. If there are no updates, this is what you'll get. There's no updates found. If there are updates, then it will tell you that there's new software and it starts to download automatically. There may be several steps that they have to go through, several updates that they have to go through to get this updated. If it's been in the off position and they've selected no, on a regular basis. There's also a faster way to update the software if you choose to, and it's by going to LG.com. Now let's show you how to navigate that quickly and easily. Now what I did is we went to LG.com, and what we're going to do is we're going to show you what we're keying in on our keyboard. Over here in the area right here to the right where you have your search, over here on the right of our website, you start keying in your model number. Now when you get part of the model number keyed in, what it will do is start sorting through our model numbers to where you can select the model number that you're dealing with. I'm going to select one of these. Now to easily navigate our website, down here at the bottom where it says support, click on support. 
Okay. Once you click on support, you'll see a screen that says manuals and downloads. Click on manuals and downloads. Now, see, on this screen is where you can access user guide information, and several other abundant amounts of information. Now, there are two, in rare cases, you're going to see this, where there are two different software versions. If there are two different software versions, the higher number's latest version is not always the case. See where it says in red, reference? It tells you it opens in a new layer. Let me show you what you're going to find in reference. When you look at all the details that found within your model and model service number, you're going to find that some of them may say a dash UA, dash UB, a PUA, etc. There may be some things beyond that model number. And what you do is you look in this reference if there are two software versions, and the reference will give you a list of specific models that is covered or that that software version applies to. This also information is, this information also includes some generalized information as to what each version of software was released for. So if any of these pertain to the customer's complaint, then it may as be as simple as a software update to correct the customer's issue. But if you click on one of these and you do not find your specific model listed in this, then check the other software release that you see listed and see which one of them you have to download. Now, what we do is we download this software and it'll ask, do you want to, yes. Now, what we can do is we can save this software wherever we want to in our PCs to give you your time that you have to wait for it to download down here at the bottom. This is one of the reasons if you are going out on a TV service call, our software updates are fairly large files now. It's best to do it where you have high speed internet rather than trying to do it through a cell phone connection or through the customer's internet connection, which can be a privacy issue when you ask them for their network password. People are a little touchy with that information these days. Now, once you download the software file, you can click here for open. And in this case, my computer already has ALZIP, but some of the Windows computers already has it. It's a default uh, program to unzip or extract files. Now, one thing I do want to point out, is see the name on this file that you're downloading, that you've downloaded. It's a long name. Do not ever rename this .epk file. The way you downloaded it, it is zipped. It is compressed. The TV does not have the capability in its software to uncompress one of these type files. So what you have to do is you have to click on the file and you have to click extract. Then you can choose where you want to save it on your computer or your USB drive. Now, if your computer has a USB drive plugged in, what I will do is select the USB drive. And I would ex extract it onto the USB drive. Now, when you extract it, you'll see this on your screen. and it will immediately open the location that it was extracted to. Now it is uncompressed and ready to go onto a USB drive. Now, the USB drive, I'll demonstrate this on this PC. You'll have to create a new folder, just as I've done here, on the USB drive. This new folder you're going to have to rename it L G underscore D T V. Then what you'll have to do is you will have to take this file and put it in that folder 
on the USB drive. When you plug that USB drive into the television, it will automatically recognize that folder and it will ask you if you want to update the software. You select yes on the screen and it will be updated in less than about a minute and a half to two minutes. This is how you manually execute a software update. Refer to some of the attached material to this training that you can use for future reference. Thank you.